My Last Blind Date, Better Date Than Never, written by Susan Hatler, narrated by Martha Lee. The only thing worse than having a blind date on Valentine's Day is having no date at all. Well, that's exactly where I stood. I, Rachel Price, was dateless, unless I chose what was behind door number two. The blind date option had just come from my friend and co-worker, Ellen Holbrook. She'd stop by my cubicle at work and drop the bomb. An exciting opportunity to meet the love of my life? Doubtful. With three failed setups courtesy of Ellen already, I dreaded dealing with another dating disaster. Dateless or blind date, decisions, decisions. So, Ellen strode to my desk and fiddled with the stapler, making it click, click, click. She wiggled her brows and smiled at me hopefully. Should I make the call? An actual date on Valentine's Day had tempted me, but with Ellen's track record, it'd be safer ordering takeout. No dice. I reached up from my chair and gave her a hug. But thanks for the offer. My phone rang, and I wondered who would be calling about software sales at 4.45 in the afternoon on the big Hallmark holiday. I snatched up the receiver. Rachel Price, hello? Heavy breathing. Lovely. I slammed the receiver down. Ellen gestured toward the phone. Who was it? The universe telling me all the non-psychotic ones are taken. I swiveled in my chair and logged off my computer, knowing I wouldn't get any more work done today. Don't worry about me, Ellen. Just promise when I keel over, old and alone, you'll bury me in the backyard next to Chester. He's the only one who's ever really loved me. Ellen rolled her eyes like I was hopeless. I love you, morbid girl. When are you going to admit you're using your dog as a substitute boyfriend? She made it sound like a bad thing. Seemed like a smart move to me. Chester always greeted me at the door, liked to cuddle, and let me pick the side of the bed. What more could I ask for? Oh yeah, romance, marriage, children. I'm telling you to listen to your best friend and let me set you up tonight. This guy could be your Henry. She'd pulled out her ultimate enticement. Ellen and Henry had met, fallen in love, and married all in the last six months. They were sickeningly sweet, but I'd bet Henry leaving his balled-up socks by the living room recliner day after day wouldn't be so endearing by their first anniversary. Look, Elle, I appreciate the thought, really. If the last three setups you'd planned hadn't made me want to stab myself repeatedly with that letter opener, I'd totally be all over it. She glanced at the silver letter opener in my pencil holder and then pointed a finger at me. I knew you were holding a grudge against me for Wayne. How was I supposed to know he wasn't over Sharon? It's not just Wayne, and you know it. My bad blind dates blipped through my brain. Blind date number one. Cute, successful, and charming. Until dessert, when he suggested we head back to his place for some whipped cream fun. Claimed his nickname was Rock because he could rock a woman's world. Blind date number two, late, disheveled, and talked about his ex-wife the entire night. He cried at the end, announcing he didn't think he was quite ready for dating. Uh, you think? Wayne now attends bi-weekly therapy sessions trying to figure out how to win Sharon back. Blind date number three? Salesman who spent an hour explaining my good fortune that he'd yet to tie the knot. He gave me his top ten reasons why he was a stellar catch. To end the date, I gave him my top ten reasons for cleaning out my doggie's litter box. I shook my head. Ellen's heart was in the right place, but the nuts and bolts of her screening process needed serious tightening. I'd rather watch Sex in the City reruns with Chester tonight than suffer through another bad date. Trust me, this one will be different. Henry's friend is in his softball league, and he sounds like a ten. If I weren't already taken, I'd go for him myself. Ellen sat on the small filing cabinet next to my desk, stared me straight in the eye, and softened her voice. I think you'll have fun with him. Fourth time's a charm, Rach. Charm doesn't last, I sighed. It had been a year since Jeremy and I'd broken up. 
After two years of trying to make it work with him, he'd started seeing my hairdresser behind my back. I'd known her special haircut slash highlight price was too good to be true. Nope, love just wasn't in the cards for me. The door to Noah Peterson's office opened. Ellen and I peered over my sparsely decorated cubicle. Noah had been with the company for two months now. He had the best sales record of all the VPs, the friendliest personality in the software biz, and the most gorgeous blue eyes I'd ever seen. Yes, I'd noticed Noah. It was hard not to. He paused outside his office, leaned against the door jam, and scanned something in the open file he was holding. Hey, Noah. Melinda Morgan, our lead customer service rep, swept in and sidled up next to him in her tight V-neck sweater. Ellen and I exchanged a look. Melinda worked out two hours every day and had the body to show for it. She'd dated two of the VPs already, and it was only a matter of time before she latched her red-painted talons into Noah. I marveled at Melinda's skillfully applied makeup. In the morning, I barely had time to make coffee and throw my hair into a twist before I ran late for the office. As for the gym, forcing myself to a yoga class once a week seemed enough of a return on my monthly membership dues. Happy Valentine's Day, Melinda told Noah in a way that breathed sex. Jealousy surged up my spine. Valentine's Day. Noah batted the manila file against his forehead. So that's what's up with all those flower deliveries today. Here I figured we had a horticulture department I didn't know about. I choked on my laugh and Ellen coughed to cover hers. Add a sense of humor to what made Noah number one on my wish list. Hmm. <laughs> Melinda didn't appear to get the horticulture joke and seemed perplexed as to whether or not he'd gotten the hint to ask her out. Do you have plans for tonight? He glanced down at the file for a second, then nodded. Big plans. Ouch. Those two words stabbed at my heart. What big plans did he have? More importantly, who were they with? There were no photos in his office, and he didn't wear a ring, but apparently some lucky girl had snagged him. There went any chance of my fantasies becoming reality. Melinda smiled and leaned toward Noah's tall, well-built frame. I have plans, too. Nothing that can't be rescheduled, though. Wow, the woman attacked like a tigress on the prowl. Why couldn't I be that forward with Noah? Oh yeah, that niggling fear that he'd heard himself laughing at the one-way crush I'd had since he'd started working at our office. Risks weren't really my thing. Noah took her flirtation in stride. Who's the lucky guy? Met him in my building. She made a big show of examining her nails. Probably just making it clear she didn't have a ring on that special finger. Stuart owns his own business, drives a BMW, and runs in A-list circles. Ellen raised her eyebrows and mouthed, impressive. And yet, even with a major hunk available to her, Melinda still wanted Noah. Couldn't blame her. Noah really was in a league of his own. Not that I'd admitted my crush to Ellen, even though we'd been best friends for five years since battling for the last piece of cake at that company picnic. She'd won, but I'd earned her respect by snatching a chunk with my fork. Never get between me and carrot cake. I should have confided in Ellen, but what would be the point? It's not like I'd have a chance with a guy like Noah. Me? Medium height, medium build, brown eyes and brown hair that used to get highlighted for a steal. Not exactly a blonde bombshell like Melinda or my ex-hairdresser. No tight butt, firm abs, or long legs either. But, like I said, my plans aren't etched in granite. Melinda lowered her sultry voice, but thankfully I had the closest cubicle. If something better crossed my path, I'd certainly be up for that, even if it meant staying in. I scoffed. Subtle. Noah's eyes widened a fraction, then he gave her a friendly smile. Well, have a great night with whatever you end up doing. Mmm. She pursed her pink lips, started down the hall, then tossed over her shoulder. You too. Wow. I used a low voice so my coworkers and surrounding cubicles couldn't hear. 
Noah must have some serious plans to turn down an invitation with her. Ellen raised her brows. Maybe he's looking for more in a woman than a killer body. I immediately thought of Jeremy and the woman he'd dumped me for. Yeah, that's exactly what guys want. Good conversation. I give up. Live happily ever after with your mutt. See if I care. Ellen stood, huffed, and stomped out of my cubicle. He happens to be pedigree. How dare she insult my miniature beagle baby? I snatched pages from the printer tray, stapled them together, then sent someone behind me. Don't even try it. I'm not going to say yes. I haven't asked you for anything yet. The smooth male voice had a hint of laughter in it. Noah. My heart raced. It wasn't unusual for Noah to stop by my cubicle and chat before leaving work, but being dateless on V-Day had thrown me off kilter. I thought you were Ellen. He smiled, revealing straight white teeth underneath his perfect lips. Close, but I'm a little taller. And a lot more handsome. Yes, you are that. When he leaned back against my desk, it put everything below his belt buckle in my direct eye line. What's Ellen trying to talk you into? A blind date, I blurted. With great effort, I forced my eyes from his sculpted chest to his spectacular face. His brows rose as if surprised. No date on the Hallmark holiday, huh? Had he just... I thought I was the only one who called it that. Don't tell anybody, but... He held his hand to the side of his mouth and whispered, I think St. Valentine's Day is all a part of a huge advertising scheme created by flour and chocolate companies. Now, if we could just make a holiday to help sell software programs, we'd be set. Great idea. It's the 21st century, after all. How about Happy Computer Day? Oh, how I'd like to celebrate that holiday with him in a non-working way. Run my fingers over his keyboard. I smiled at the thought. Everything felt better when I was with Noah. The way he looked at me, our easy banter, the sparks between us that I was obviously imagining. My mood went from elated to deflated in a matter of seconds. That's reality for you. I'll put computer day down on my calendar. He checked his watch suddenly. Almost time to call it a day, so, uh, are you going on that blind date? I paused, wondering why he sounded so interested. Probably just being polite. Me? Make trivial conversation with someone I've never met, likely don't have anything in common with, and all for the minutely slim shot it'll work out? I haven't decided. He tilted his head and gave me a side glance. You make dating sound worse than going to the dentist. I avoided his eyes, wanting to kick myself for letting that slip. I hear you have big plans. His brows quirked and he glanced toward his office. You heard what I said to Melinda? Uh, yeah, and I still had the neck strain to prove it. Couldn't help but notice, what with the email poll going around. Email poll? About whether or not you'd ask her out. He studied my face and seemed like he couldn't decide whether to believe me or not. And what was your vote? She's pretty. Fun. I shrugged. Any guy would have a good time with Mel. Frowning, he tapped his file on his opposite palm. So you think all I need is a pretty face? Great, now I'd insulted him. I raised both hands in surrender. Just a joke, there wasn't a poll, I swear. Rach, I... Ellen's head popped over our shared cubicle wall and she gaped when she saw Noah. I, um, was just checking to see if you've reconsidered that thing we talked about earlier. I hesitated. Noah had big plans, whereas I had popcorn and a movie with my beloved beagle. My pride paused to reconsider. Well, I've got to finish up a thing or two before I head out. Noah wrote a quick note, then handed it to me. He gave Ellen a paper as well. I'll let you two talk. Hope you both have a great weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. It pained me to say it. I didn't want him happy on Valentine's Day unless he was with me. Ellen scanned her paper. Sure, Noah, you too. I gestured to the yellow sheet Ellen was holding. What did he hand you? She shrugged. Software updates, you? I glanced down at mine. Sure enough, software updates. 
In the top right corner, however, he'd scribbled in his smooth handwriting, Take a chance. A trip to the dentist can fix some painful aches. My heart sank. If he was giving me dating advice, we'd clearly entered the friend zone. Obviously, he wasn't going to take a chance with the brunette who couldn't afford to highlight her hair. So, Ellen's eyes sparkled. What's it going to be? TV with Chester or a blind date with a guy your best friend has complete confidence you'll adore? I stared at Noah's note. Take a chance? I'd taken plenty. My high school boyfriend turned out to be mostly hormones. My numerous dates in college taught me zilch about romance and plenty about the do's and don'ts of drinking. Ah, uh, yes, and let's not forget my recent fiascos. Seriously, why would any smart girl put her heart on the chopping block again? Mine had been diced up enough already, thank you very much. Maybe it'd be worth the risk with Noah, but he had big plans. The thought of him with another girl made me nauseous. He might be in a committed relationship or, gasp, engaged. I'm waiting. Ellen slipped into my cubicle, filling up the empty space Noah had vacated. What's it going to be? Ellen had her romantic date with Henry, Melinda had her hot evening with Mr. A-List, and I had another TV marathon with my loyal pooch. If I didn't take Ellen up on her matchmaking, I'd probably obsess all night over Noah's big heart day plans. Maybe Noah was right. Maybe I should take one last chance. At the very least, it could be a distraction. Okay, okay. I spun my chair around to face Ellen. You can let Cupid shoot me with his arrow one last time. Her face lit up. She squealed, then clapped her hands. I'm all over it. I'll call you with the details. You won't regret it. Famous last words, I muttered as Ellen hurried away to set up my last blind date. After work, I went home and browsed through my closet. Hmm, what does one wear on a date they don't want with someone they don't even know? Ruff, ruff. You love me in my sweats, don't you, baby? I patted Chester on the head, then went back to my search. I found black pants and a red sweater. Red? On Valentine's Day? I refused to be a walking cliché. Chester stared up at me and wagged his tail. Ruff! You're right, boy. My heart is totally not in this. I tossed the pants and top onto my bed and reached for my cell to cancel. Before I could dial, a picture of Ellen on her wedding day appeared on my Blackberry screen. I cringed as Forever in Love by Kenny G rang out. I pressed talk. Keep your hands off my cell phone. Ellen giggled with glee. Plug that in while you are at lunch. One day you'll be forever in love. Maybe it'll happen tonight. You haven't changed your mind, have you? Yes, actually. I dropped onto my bed, threw my arm over my eyes, and felt Chester nuzzle his way under my elbow. I'm sorry, Elle. I just can't. Oh no, you're going. Her voice went from sweet to stern. Henry says you not only have to go, but you'd better have a blast after what he sacrificed. A wet tongue slid across my cheek. What do you mean? We called the boathouse and changed our reservation to your name. I sat upright. What? It's Valentine's Day, my dear. Dishes clanked and it sounded like the water was running. Everything's booked. I'm not going to steal your romantic holiday evening, no way. Oh, yes, you are. Her tone told me not to mess with her. I gave you our res because I love you and I want you to be as happy as I am. I'm sorry you had a few lousy dates, but it's time to try again. Take another risk. That's how you'll find your true love. Your Henry. Tears sprang into my eyes. How could she sound so sure? I'd hit 30 years old last month. Finding eternal love or even a decent soulmate felt hopeless. Chester cuddled into my lap and I set my hand on his warm, soft head. An awkward silence filled the line. Promise me you'll give this guy a chance. Her voice lowered an octave. Not like the last one. I sniffed and grabbed a tissue. What? I heard how you cut your date short with Timothy because you had to go home and clean out your freakoid dog's litter box. 
Unlike you, I live in an apartment and work all day. He loves his litter box. My eyes were moist, but I managed to chuckle. You know Chester won't go unless his area is pristine. Uh-huh. Fine. I squeeze my eyes shut and sighed. I'll meet your ten and have an open mind with the mystery man. Can you at least give me a clue? Does he have hygiene issues I should know about? Bodies buried in his backyard? No way. Ellen's voice was firm. You forget how well I know you, Rachel Price. If I give you one detail, you'll twist it into a reason to stay home and clean your refrigerator. Litter box. Exactly. She paused. Just show up at the boathouse at 7.30 p.m., sharp, smile, and give love a chance. Love, with a stranger, not likely. Then I remembered that Ellen had been single six months ago. Something stirred inside me, a flittering feeling that felt like hope. Being a woman of my word, the cab dropped me off at the boathouse in Old Sacramento at 7.30 in the evening. I asked the driver to come back at nine o'clock sharp. After meeting my blind suitor, I'd no doubt get depressively drunk and I figured an hour and a half was my good faith limit for Disasterville. Lots of faith in love. Yeah, that was me. I walked up to the hostess, avoiding even a glimpse of all the lovey-dovey couples in the waiting area of this swanky restaurant. Reservation for Rachel Price. The hostess eyed my outfit. I'd worn all black to suit my mood. She, on the other hand, wore a bright pink dress and fingered her way down the list on her podium. The other party is already here, right this way. She led me to a table in the rear with a scenic view of the river. I spotted the back of my date's head and evaluated. Short, sandy brown hair, collared shirt, no red flags, yet. He probably had pointy canines he'd sink into my jugular. Here you are, Marcia will be your server and she'll be right with you. The hostess gestured to the empty seat and mystery guy stood to pull out my chair. Impressive. I moved to sit down and prepared for the bite. Thank you, I... My voice trailed off and my mouth stayed open as I fell back into my chair. Noah? He smiled and those crinkles appeared on either side of his gorgeous blues. Surprise. To say the least, what... What are you doing here? Instantly, I imagined scenarios that made my heart race. That he had a crush on me, too. That we'd laugh and flirt over dinner, make out afterwards, get married, have babies, grow old together, and... I'm saving you from the dentist. The dentist? Then I remembered our conversation at work. Oh, he was just being nice. Any lingering hope leaked out of me. Not noticing, he slipped into his seat. You seemed less than thrilled about meeting someone new, so I figured you wouldn't be too disappointed if I showed up instead. True, but how... Good evening, I'm Marcia. A tall, dark-haired woman appeared. Would you care to order a cocktail? Our drink special tonight is love potion. Her voice and facial expression lacked any spark of enthusiasm. Comes in a martini glass. Sounds cheesy, I blurted. It does. Noah held up his middle and index fingers. We'll take two. Two love potions coming right up, she nodded and disappeared. I guffawed at Noah's festive beverage choice. You don't even know what's in it. If we're going to celebrate the Hallmark holiday together, we should really go all out. How bad can it be? He winked at me and feather-like flutters tickled my belly. Actually, with the turn the night had taken, drinking mouthwash would have tasted fine. At least I'd get to spend the evening with Noah, even if it was just as friends. Our waitress doesn't come across as happy to be here. Her moods seem kind of grim, huh? Maybe she has an appointment with the dentist later she's worried about. His lips twitched into a grin. I can't believe you pulled this off. The red rose centerpiece made me smile. I lifted a rose and breathed in the aroma. Ellen was going to have some serious explaining to do. What happened to your big plans? He grinned. You mean watching Duke versus North Carolina with Bubbles? I figured I'd have more fun going out with you. Bubbles? With that kind of name, I couldn't decide whether or not I needed to be jealous. My golden retriever. They named her at the pound before I rescued her. In case you were wondering. 
He leaned forward in his chair. Duke VNC is a big deal. With March Madness around the corner, this game could turn out to be a preview of the Final Four. Sports talk. I had no idea how to translate that. If his big plans were to watch basketball with his dog, then that suggested, does this mean you're single? He nodded and then reached for his water. Would I be here if I weren't? But you're hot. Oh, good job, Rachel. Impress him with your intelligence, why don't you? He choked on a sip, coughed into his hand, then set his glass down. I'll take that as a compliment, but as long as we're comparing looks, are you sure you're single? A zing went through me. Man, he was smooth. Very smooth. Yes, I am. I smirked. Single, that is. Like you. He laughed, and I could feel the smoldering going on. Good. Glad that's settled. The waitress returned with our mystery drinks, took our orders, then left without a hint of a smile. Noah eyed his martini glass. Time to find out if it's toxic. Should we take turns in case one of us has to call 911? I asked playfully. He leaned toward me, his face sobering. I say we go down together. My skin tingled and I so wanted to get that in writing. I lifted my pink drink. Here's to taking chances. He raised his glass. In more ways than one. I took a sip and the syrupy sweet liquid slid down with ease. I loved it. I loved Ellen. I loved life. Wow, who would have thought it? Lowering my glass, I traced the sugary lip with my finger. You know, I don't do small talk well. I swore this would be my last blind date. I promise, no small talk. And as to your vow, I'll do my best to hold you to it. Hold me to it? I was kind of hoping he'd just hold me. I blushed at the thought and grasped for conversation. How is it possible you don't have a girlfriend, I blurted, still amazed that I was here. With Noah. The Noah. The one I'd been dreaming about for months. Since you're so hot, I mean. I added that last part teasingly, poking fun at myself. I could tell he thought I was cute. Maybe this love potion stuff had been a good idea after all. I took another fortifying sip. He set his glass down on the table. Well, I was in a relationship for several years before I relocated for this job opportunity. Kate's a great person, but we didn't see ourselves spending the rest of our lives together. Our breakup was mutual and amicable. Clearly, Kate was insane. He reached for a piece of bread, buttered it, then set it on my plate. How about you? Nothing so civil. I picked up the tiny piece of bread and took a breath. Jeremy and I were never on the same page. It felt like two years trying to put a tuxedo on a pig. Sounds like a lot of work, he said seriously. It was, but I can thank my hairdresser for taking the load off me. She'd been giving him more than haircuts behind my back, if you know what I mean. He winced. Sorry to hear that. I leaned toward him, bit my bottom lip, and gave a little shrug. I'm over it. I'm glad. Forget smoldering, we'd advanced to downright sizzling. Heat blazed through me. This ranked beyond the friend zone. If I could speak, I would have asked for the check. Instead, my eyes were locked with his, and there was no way I was looking away first. The waitress set our plates down in front of us, distracting me and breaking the moment. Noah tugged at his collar, then picked up his fork. What were we talking about? Relationships, I beamed, loving that I seemed to affect him as much as he did me. That's right. He cleared his throat. You told me earlier you had enough with trivial conversation. What's that about? I scooped some mashed potatoes with my fork. Ellen, being an ecstatic newlywed, thrives on fixing me up through Henry. For some reason, whenever the small talk starts, I just zone out. Can't help it. He blinked. Who's Henry? Ellen's husband. I lifted another forkful of potatoes and they melted in my mouth. Even food tasted better when I was with Noah. Which reminds me, she'd said I was meeting with Henry's softball buddy. A perfect ten. He put a hand to his chest. Are you saying I'm not a ten? More like a twenty-five. I moistened my lips, trying to be smooth. I'm still deciding. 
Just because I was head over heels didn't mean I'd play easy. Well then, let me see if I can gain some points for creativity. He dabbed the side of his mouth with his linen napkin and set his fork diagonally on his empty plate. Since you seem to be dreading the blind date so much, I figured I might have a shot. My heart pounded in my chest. Since you didn't know your real date, I figured it wouldn't make a difference if I had Ellen substitute me in instead. Oh, it made a difference in a good way. I savored my last bite of salmon, almost unable to believe Noah's confession. Truth be told, Rachel, he looked down almost shy before meeting my eyes again. I've tried my best to flirt with you for over two months now, but wasn't quite sure if you were interested. You, um, seemed to date quite a bit. I put a hand to my forehead. I'd suffered through two months without Noah because I'd been letting Ellen set me up. How could you think I wouldn't be interested? You're, well, you're hot. He smiled softly. Glad you think so, but you never indicated you thought that. My body heated so fast I had to hold the table to steady myself. Consider yourself indicated. He fixed his eyes on me, then slipped his hand over mine and laced our fingers. Likewise, I swallowed, having trouble getting my feelings across. You know what I think, Noah? He tightened his fingers and shook his head, still gazing at me. What? Deciding to call and cancel the nine o'clock cabbie, I gestured to my empty glass. I think this love potion really works. Life suddenly felt like a Disney movie. Girl meets boy, girl likes boy, boy surprises girl on a not-so-blind date, boy gives girl ride home and girl finds his golden retriever on the front seat of his car. Gotta love a man who's devoted to his dog. Girl and boy go back to her place to watch sports highlights cuddled up on the couch together. I glanced at the rug on the floor where my miniature beagle curled against Noah's golden retriever. Thank goodness Chester and Bubbles seem to be hitting it off. Noah slid his arm around me. How do you think their owners are doing? I gazed into those soft blue eyes and decided they were even more amazing close up. This definitely rates as the best blind date ever. He smiled, showing me those adorable crinkles, and then leaned toward me. I held my breath. Brrrring. My home phone shrilled. Oh no. No. No, no! Ignore it, I whispered, but Noah was already handing me the phone. I glared at the plastic receiver. Who would call me at 10.30 at night on V-Day? Didn't they know I was busy? I pressed the talk button on my cordless. Hello? Rach, it's me. I didn't recognize the raspy male with the world's worst timing. Me who? It's me. Short pause and then... Jeremy. Jeremy? No, no way. I glanced at Noah, who seemed to be taking unprecedented interest in the candle arrangement on my coffee table. Why in the world are you calling me? He sniffed. Debbie broke up with me this morning. Says I'm not over you, and she's right. I shuddered. Did you overdose on heart candy or something? You sound upset. Uh, yeah, I am. I glanced at Noah, who was now studying me. He smiled. I scooted toward him. He moved closer. I, I need you to give me a second chance, Jeremy pleaded. I gripped the phone I'd forgotten I was holding. Nope, not going to happen. It's Valentine's Day, Rach. Can I at least come over so we can talk? After our breakup, there was a brief time when I'd hoped Jeremy would come to his senses, beg my forgiveness, and want me back. Scary to think I might have settled for someone I didn't even trust. I'm sorry you got dumped, Jeremy, but I have to go. Good luck, okay? He whimpered. Does this mean you don't forgive me? Forgive you? This time I burst out laughing. Jeremy, you did me a favor. Bye. I threw the phone to the far side of the sofa. Noah lifted a hand to touch my chin. Wrong number? Wrong, wacky, disturbing number. I hate it when that happens. To my disappointment, he removed his hand and picked up the remote control. You watch the highlights for me, so if you want, I'll watch Sex in the City for you. Really? You don't have to. Sweet, but he truly didn't have to. I couldn't care less about Sarah Jessica Parker right now. 
I want to earn as many brownie points as possible. He slipped his arm around me and snuggled close. Besides, I plan to distract you from the TV. A lot. I moistened my lips. Do we have to wait until it starts? He bent toward me, then brushed his nose against mine. Happy Valentine's Day, Rachel. His breath felt warm against my cheek. Oh, yum. Double yum. Next year, I expect flowers, I whispered. His lips brushed my jawbone. Anything you say. Unable to wait any longer, I cupped his face in my hands and pressed my mouth to his. Soft, warm, amazing. Our kiss deepened, sending shivers through me. Our mouths melted together and my off-kilter world clicked into place. You know all those previous heartaches? How I'd wanted to give up? How hard it had been for me to take a risk? It was all worth it. I'd suffer through much worse to end up in this exact moment, here with Noah, my last blind date. This has been My Last Blind Date, Better Date Than Never, written by Susan Hatler, narrated by Martha Lee, copyright 2012 by Susan Hatler, production copyright 2014 by Susan Hatler. Susan Hatler is a New York Times and USA Today best-selling author who writes humorous and emotional women's fiction and young adult novels. Many of Susan's books have been translated into German, Spanish, French, and Italian. A natural optimist, she believes life is amazing, people are fascinating, and imagination is endless. She loves spending time with her characters and hopes you do too.